that when you slow down and really think about nothing, that you clear your mind and really can see the world clearly for what it is. And I was able to do that yesterday. One of my friends has a boat on Lake Austin. And so I took my uh, children uh, out on the lake with his children. And we ran into Rob Lowe's uh, younger brother, one of the stars of True Blood. That was weird. But other than that, I there was almost no one on the lake, which is very rare. It's really the dammed up Colorado River. They just call it Lake Austin. Now it's Lady Bird Lake. They changed the name every few years. Why not? It's really a river. Lie and call it a lake. Why not tell more lies? The point is, we're out on the Colorado River, wheels within wheels, and uh, I watched, we're out there about four or five hours, and probably saw five boats. It was deader than when I was a kid would come down here and visit my grandparents and my dad would say, let's drive out to Lake Austin that was hillbillies then back in the 80s. Nobody out there. Maybe a few fishing shacks and a few mansions on the hill. And you would see more boats when I was a little kid on Lake Austin than I saw out there yesterday. It was the perfect day. Dead. And I watched the police drive around and pull over every single boat on the lake. And people kayaking, they would stop them and have their lights on and do something. So then they got behind us, and I got up with my iPhone, started filming it, because they were bugging their eyes out, you know, with a predatory bearing, until they drove right up by the boat and looked at me in the face and then looked sheepishly and waved and drove off. And I don't know if they recognized me or what, because I was wearing a fedora and with the sun, a straw fedora. They probably weren't. It was that I wasn't going to just sit there and roll around on the bottom of the boat you know, begging them that, oh, I'm a criminal, please, please don't get me. And again, I'm not anti-police, but every day I see videos where they arrest someone filming them even 100 yards away, not interfering with them. Or I see video where the cops in the woman's face as so she kisses his nose and they slam her to the ground and then arrest her and then charge her with assaulting them. Or I saw an article uh, yesterday in the video in another case where they knocked the woman's windows out because she bought LaCroix water. I drink LaCroix water, really good uh, canned water. And I, I know cans aren't good for you, but I still, if I see it, sometimes I drink it because it's such LaCroix, LaCroix, however you pronounce it. She's going to a charity event for people with disabilities. They've got cookie dough. And they've also got LaCroix water. And she gets in her car, closes the door. They run up screaming with guns, unmarked. Tell her, get out. Well, first they tell her, roll down the window. So she goes to roll down the window. They go, she has to start the car. They go, no, don't roll down your window. And then they tell her, stay where she's at. And then they knock the windows out. And then charge her with assaulting them. She never touched them. And it's, it's, it's militarized police is what it is. Most of them are vets of occupied zones where they'll just shoot up whole vehicles if somebody looks at them wrong on record. And they're coming back, and they're not peace officers. They are paramilitary police. They'll admit this. And we are an occupied country, and this is how we're treated. And the more slaves they can bag, the better. And it's really crazy. As I saw this footage of this guy filming police, it looks like he's about 60, 70 yards away, broad daylight. They come over, put him in handcuffs. Looks like one of them punches him in the face. The guy's dog jumps out of his vehicle and they shoot the dog. And then they charge the guy with a bunch of stuff. I mean, this is, this is how they take you to the FEMA camp now, folks. We have the biggest prison population in the world. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Can you keep them in the dark for life? Can you hide them from the waiting world, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, mother. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen. It is 
Tuesday, the second day of July 2013. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we are going to be live here for the next three hours. My old friend of 15 years, Raymond Teague, is scheduled to be arriving here any minute. Uh, and he said that he could come on and talk about his experiences as a mission controller on the front line uh, of uh, the Apollo missions. And uh, he did talk to us a little bit about the NSA and said that I could, you know, talk about some of it that wasn't classified. But then he called us the other day and said, hey, will you please stop talking about that? So we'll we'll see what Raymond Raymond is able to talk about uh, coming on the broadcast uh, here in about 25 minutes uh, from now. And then Professor Griff, uh, of course, uh, one of the founders of Public Enemy, who's here in town with LL Cool J and Ice Cube. Uh, he is scheduled. He's driving down from Dallas right now with the uh, whole crew. And uh, so we're going to get some interviews with him. And who knows, tonight I was invited to their show and backstage and stuff, but I have got my wife's birthday tonight, so I will not be at that. Uh, I would love to be there, but I'm sending uh, John Bounds, so we'll see. Who knows? Maybe we'll get some other interesting uh, interviews uh, for you in the next few days. We'll probably air it next week if we do get an interview with LL Cool J or Ice Cube on their take on the whole New World Order and stuff. Uh, who I want to get on is Ice T, who's always pro Second Amendment, and goes, "Hey, when the government turns theirs in, I'll turn mine in." And hey, peers, you got bodyguards. Uh, you want them to turn their guns in? Okay, so when you turn yours in, I'll turn mine in. How's that sound? Just real? That's what Jesse Ventura says. That's what I say. The only people that want our guns are gangster government. And the mark of whether somebody's a good guy or a bad guy, where you start is, are they pro self-defense? It's very, very simple. So uh, that's some of the uh, issues uh, that we're going to be uh, raising and going over. In the meantime, at the start of the next hour, because I've got Raymond coming up and other news I want to get to now, I'm going to break down foreign troops in America. And Paul Watson did a story on this yesterday morning that ended up being the top story on DrudgeReport.com. And so it was covered by Michael Savage, uh, Rush Limbaugh, uh, Sean Hannity, uh, and uh, I didn't hear Becky Poo covered it, but we were sent clips by other listeners. That people, we don't really listen. We're, we're too busy doing our own news research, but people send us the clips. I, I listened to the Savage clip, and he had the best analysis of it compared to the others. But the point is, and that, that clip's up on Infowars.com, the point is I want to explain something to people. The old timers uh, of the John Virch Society in the 50s and 60s and the old timers uh, who, who they called extremist crazies we're constantly saying there's a plan to put foreign troops in America. There's a plan to get rid of our borders. There's a plan to put you in 200 square foot homes. There's a plan to break up families. There's a plan to take our guns. There's a plan for forced inoculation. Now, 60 years later, all of this is being phased in or has been phased in. Remember all the people like G. Edward Griffin 45 years ago and Red Beckman 50 years ago. And it's weird getting old, folks. I was doing this 20 years ago on air, 18 years ago. We were always going off source documents. But then people heard about it. And then, oh, it just became a rumor. We were going off congressional hearings, Council on Foreign Relations publications, Club of Rome publications, UN statements, Rockefeller statements. And that's what's so frustrating about this. And we said they're going to implode the world economy, bail out the governments with fiat currency, signing us on to their fake derivatives debts. I've been saying this for 14, 15 years. Because it was the plan when they got rid of Glass-Steagall. I had the economist on to break it down like George Humphrey. The issue I'm getting at here is that we've known exactly what's going to happen because they all wrote about it like the White House science czar in 1974, the year I was born. He's now the White House science czar. Wrote it with the former science czar of Bush Sr. John P. Holdren saying we're going to put stuff in your water to sterilize your butt incrementally. But not everybody, because we don't want it to be causal where you can find one thing that's doing it. It's going to be an aggregate cocktail effect. 
And then all the other books, you know, Bertrand Russell and the rest of them wrote about spiking our water, spiking our food, reducing fertility, how they get rid of the family, how they do it first by encouraging homosexuality so that uh, there was no definition of man and woman. Now in the U.S. and Europe, they've banned the word husband and wife on government forms because husband and wife is hurtful to people that don't have a husband or wife. We're already there. And so it's, it's way past them turning it into some fake civil liberty about, oh, you don't like gay people. It has nothing to do with that. It, it, I mean, uh, if a frog isn't able to reproduce because it's had chemicals put in the water, is that about gay or heterosexual? If uh, more and more fish are hermaphroditic, I mean, is that because I'm homophobic, I'm reporting that? This is the mindlessness of where, you know, they had that teapot, I never really even talked about it, that was simply a teapot with a handle, looked nothing like Hitler. It's like looking at a cloud and saying it looks like a dinosaur. If a cloud looked like Hitler to somebody, do we have to send up, you know, the Air Force to spray it with chemicals to dissipate it because it's racist? All the real tyrannies going on, we're giving $85 billion a month of taxpayer money to foreign banks to bankrupt us. Uh, uh, cancer rates are exploding. All this horrible tyranny is taking place. We're all losing our rights to habeas corpus, to posse commentatus. All the basic liberties are being eroded, destroyed, demolished, and people are going into J.C. Penney and seeing a, a good-looking teapot with a curve and an area for your handle and a round handle on the top that someone imagined looks like Adolf Hitler. And now a girl's eating a pastry and it looks like the shape of a gun after she took bites out of it. They've kicked kids out for bringing a gun, gun cookie. You know, they're making cookies with moms and the boy makes one like a gun. I did that when I was a kid. No, no, no. Now you're kicked out of school if you're sitting there eating it. You're sitting there, you're sitting there eating it. And you lay down the, the pastry and someone goes, a gun, and then they want to add into the his mind control hysteria. You're then kicked out of school. Or you wear an NRA shirt with an R NRA seal saying, defend our rights, and you're kicked out. And then the cops tell you to take the shirt off and you go, there's no rule without, you know, for wearing political shirts in school. Uh, I'm not going to take it off. So they then charge you with that when it's an unlawful order. The cops can't show up at your house and say, mow your yard. They can't show up at your house and say, come out here and uh, comb my hair. And you laugh. In most third world countries, in most Soviet-style countries, they make you a few days a week go do compulsory volunteerism, another Orwellian oxymoron, and do this. So at the start of the next hour... I'm going to get into our article. It's now on the right-hand side of Drudge. It's in uh, Top Story Archive of Infowars.com. Just click on that link. Russian forces to provide security at U.S. events. Ladies and gentlemen, in NLE09, they had tabletop 15 nations here with military representatives doing drills on tabletops of how they'd help take over U.S. cities, quote, during um, uh, natural disasters or civil emergencies. And the documents have been in the Washington Post, but like it's a good thing that, oh, we're going to have Mexican and Canadian troops on the streets of America during any emergency or to deal with civil unrest or insurrection. And then Canada and Mexico reciprocate where we go down there. And then you saw the Olympics a few years ago, the Winter Olympics. It was in all the big papers. U.S. troops weren't just in the one city where they had the event. What was it? Calgary, if I go from memory. It was in the paper, but like it was good. U.S. troops patrol the bar district, and they were all over multi-cities helping run checkpoints. You don't just get Royal Mounted Police running warrantless checkpoints in Canada. You get U.S. Army and U.S. Marines that were just in Fallujah a few years before. And you have from, from Tennessee to California mainstream news articles where the uh, the Marines and Army set up checkpoints with 9 millimeters on their hips and with mach heavy machine guns in the backs of Humvees and search vehicles at highway checkpoints. It's illegal to have the cops do that. But they just do it under the civil emergency, under the uh, PDD-51, and Obama has expanded those. 
So, so now, if they can get away with Russians at NORAD and Russians and anti-terror drills they had last year. And by the way, we published this stuff with Pentagon press releases and FEMA press releases. And last year, no one would cover it because it was too unbelievable. People were saying we were making it up until folks in the comments would go, well, wait a minute. This is on the Pentagon NORTHCOM website. Just like the, the Homeland Security ordered two plus million dollars this year of paper targets of children to shoot and called them no more hesitation and, and, and said no Homeland Security wanted these so people trained to kill children and women and old men. Because the police aren't police now. You may still be a good officer yourself individually, but your training, the orthodoxy, on record, is that you are a paramilitary force occupying and we're insurgents. And I said that a decade ago. That was in the Wall Street Journal a month ago. I saw the headline. Police train that the public are insurgents. That's what it is. It's insurgent occupation training. Okay? They're not going to have parachutes in Red Dawn one day. They're just going to have more and more foreign troops until you're totally used to it. And our cops go to countries to arrest people. Their cops come here. Welcome to the New World Order. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com. Let me get into the other news uh, now, ladies and gentlemen. And again, after Raymond leaves us sometime in the next hour, I will cover Russian forces to provide security at U.S. events. What's behind that? I'm going to have the next issue of the magazine, the August issue. I'm going to have that. I'm going to write articles with all the facts because no one seems to get the big picture that's hiding in 100% plain view sitting on top of us. I mean, it's all public, the plan to occupy the U.S. with foreign troops and every other country. Don't you understand? They're just acclimating. I've had foreign troops walk up on tape and tell me, turn my camera off. In America, I made films 13, 14 years ago showing you troops training and saying they're training to take on Americans. Do you not understand that? In all the video games, in all the movies, in the ROCT, ROCT training. It's always fighting gun-owning, right-wing militias. And it's very racist. It's always fighting white people in the manuals. That white males are the enemy. They don't want a new world order. Used to it was we believe in a new world order and a foreign global takeover by mega banks and all the rest of this. Go read the ADL Southern Poverty Law Center demonizing yours truly. Now it's we're bad because we oppose it. We're the real Americans. Black, white, it doesn't matter. They want to frame it, though, like only hillbillies from Michigan or Texas in all these video games or Tennessee or Alabama. Uh, oh, I don't want to be pro, you know, sovereignty and Bill of Rights. That's only white crackers that do that. I mean, that's, a, you know, the media always calls me and goes, so you're for national sovereignty and don't want open borders, don't want carbon taxes and don't want your guns taken. Are, are you a racist? The Austin American Statesman asked me that one time and actually published it. And I said, well, what, how do you respond to a question like that? What does this have to do with race? It was an issue of guns. It wasn't even borders. And this is what they do. I am an American patriot 
whose family goes back on both sides to the founding, not of the country, but to what became the colonies. My family has been here on both sides from the beginning. My family has done nothing in both sides of its lineage but defend liberty and defend freedom and defend this country and help found the state of Texas. And I won't even get into all of that. I'm a real American. I'm a good guy. I recognize the enemy takeover. It's in my guts. It's in my genes. It's in my blood. That's why I didn't have to be told to do this. I instantly began resisting it from day one as soon as I discovered it. And that's not because I'm a hero. It's because I simply want justice and liberty. I don't like being conquered. I don't like being usurped. I don't like seeing paramilitary police parading around openly preparing for war with the American people. I'm not the enemy of these police either. They've been incrementally brainwashed, brought into this from birth. The cartoons are all about UN occupation. The cartoons when I was a kid were about gun owners being bad. We have been brought up in a giant lie and it's time to awaken from it now. NL Leo 9, go pull it up on FEMA's own website. Troops from 15 countries trained to deal with the civil unrest in America. They will bring in foreign troops, and by then, it'll be so acclimated. The uniforms have already been merged a decade ago. They've all joint trained. The local police have trained with Russians and Czechs and Polish, and it doesn't matter. Because it's part of a global mega banking plan that's playing the countries off against each other. So there's a mega corporation above everything that then plays different regions off against each other. You've got all these police programs in every major city where the police for 20 years are sent to Tokyo and then in the case of Austin, and then the Tokyo cops come here, and then they do agreements where they can arrest people there, blah, blah, blah. It's all global government. Look at Snowden. He went to 20 countries, 21 nations, asking for asylum, and none of them but one communist state. And as much as I don't like Venezuela socialist and communists, I've told you, they're rogue. They're out there pretty much on their own. That's why the whole world wants to bring them down. I don't agree with their policies, but that's its own country. They're saying maybe, but they're all so scared because it's not just America they're dealing with. It's this global mafia where they want to be able to grab anybody they want anywhere where you have no rights, you have no justice, you have no privacy, you have no freedom. And then the made men of the UN, Rockefeller, Rothschild, Sachs, Coburg, Gotha combine, they are 110% above the law and can do any thing they want. It even came out in the New York Times last year that the UN sent in troops in Central Africa, but also in South America, and it lists the countries to kill whole villages of people when land had been laid aside as a carbon sink off limits. They go and kill the villagers that live on it. They, they, let me explain it. they line them up and shoot them. But hey, Miss America always says the UN loves me. And, you know, every good looking girl you see at the shopping mall is wearing a UNICEF shirt because that's what good looking women do because they saw Miss America do it. And Miss America and Miss USA, they say you need to have the NSA spying on you. You see, we're just roasting in this broth of fraud and poison. And now it's all, yes, yeah, so the Russian troops will be at high security events of the US now running things. Just Russian troops. I got video from LA coming up. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. And then at the bottom of the next hour, I will break down the plan to bring in multinational forces and put our own military under the UN, which has already happened. Remember last year when they, and again this year when they told Congress that our military was under NATO and UN command? And nothing happened, did it? And now our government runs Al Qaeda publicly and nothing happened. And they're like, well, of course we run it. They're the good guys, the gun owners are the bad guys. And I'm not being sarcastic, that's in the news. And then Professor Griff of Public Enemy is gonna be in studio with us uh, coming up. Now, if you're a TV viewer, you can see this. If you're a radio listener, you can go to Infowars.com forward slash show, Infowars.com forward slash show and see this. And I'm going to cover this some after Raymond leaves us as well. Uh, now, you see this, Time Magazine, Rise of the Robots, We've Got Company, How Smart Machines Will Change Our Lives. And I was in a bookstore this weekend with my son, and he said, Dad, look, it's the headline from your magazine. 
Now, this is copyright 2013. As you can see, if you're a TV viewer, copyright 2013. Right there. And I'm going to review some of this because it's very informative how robots are going to run our life. It actually says that in here. Now, let's go back to it. Time Magazine, the cover, Rise of the Robots. We've got company, how smart machines will change our lives. It's got the loving drone and the loving robots in school watching you and the loving undersea robots. Now, here is the October issue last year of InfoWars magazine, the end of humanity, rise of the robots. And now you read Time Magazine, and it's Rise of the Robots, how loving the little robots are, like the loving Predator drone right there. So I'm going to be, again, breaking this down. Speaking of uh, InfoWars magazine, it shows how we're affecting change out there, folks. They actually have a cautionary tale at the end about the robots. It, you know, it's kind of like, hey, uh, you won't be able to get a job with the uh, college degree you're getting for $180,000, but we're going to warn you in the emails about the college loan. It's kind of like, hey, the vampire. Hey, if you let a vampire in, they'll rip your head off, but I'm not a vampire, so let me in. Oh, come on in. Rah! Actually, I was a vampire. So, you know, they, they like to warn you by the end of the magazine. It's like, oh, by the way, uh, you won't be needed anymore. You're going to be dealt with. Uh, Robot Alchemy by Tex Mars is available at InfoWarsStore.com. It's his latest uh, coffee table book. These are the easiest to read best books. Hardcore data, but full of photos, full of posters, full of history. Let me flip through this for some of the TV viewers uh, out there. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, and you can read the entire history of robotics by the space and aeronautics professor who is really a leading expert and has sold some of the best-selling books ever on robots. And your purchase also supports our broadcast show. Robot Alchemy, the religion of the New World Order. The age of spiritual uh, machines is basically what it's breaking down. Uh, Android cyborgs and the magic of artificial life available at InfoWarsStore.com. And then lastly, ladies and gentlemen... The July issue, we got a whole bunch extra this year because I figured this would be a popular issue with the 10 free bumper stickers when you get the magazine and with it being the NSA topic, breaking down what the NSA is really doing. It is selling faster than any other magazine we've ever had. So get it in bulk, groups of 10 up to 100 at cost with 10 bumper stickers inside. Over 500,000 bumper stickers total with powerful messages like America has been occupied by globalist forces, InfoWars.com. Listen to Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, things like that. InfoWarsStore.com, get it, get it out to everybody you know. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound when I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Uh, that said, I mean, to me, the big news is the Russian troops in America to, patr uh, to patrol the American people. And now I will start that in the second segment when some stations join us in the next hour. I will start that big presentation, what's behind it, the history of it, all of it then. It's kind of a good thing I got behind and then they got behind because this is really the big enchilada. You want to understand everything else, you've got to understand this. Because remember, all the crazy old timers... That crazy uncle who was a retired army colonel, you know, that you know, said they were going to bring in Russian troops and why? Why, he's nuts. And, oh, the NSA spying on us. You know, your crazy dad said, oh, but he, he worked in the government, but wouldn't say where. We had patriots, folks, when this whole plan was rolled out, who warned everybody. And now we're here. So you better listen next hour. That's all I'm saying. I'll spend one segment on this. 
And then I'm going to get into Obama's compulsory service stuff they're calling up again. I'm going to get into this incredible video of the guy filming police from like 67 yards away. They come and arrest him, manhandle him. His dog jumps out of the window, runs over, they shoot it. And the police say, we thought the dog was going to attack you. I mean, and again, I'm not here to even, if I just bash the police, that helps the New World Order. Because that puts them more into their gang mentality. I want to reach out to the police and explain the brainwashing they're under. It ties into the Russian troops. I'm going to break all this down and show you the source documents on this, okay? Not rumors, the plan. That print me NLE09. Just type in FEMA NLE09. It was on their site for two years. They pulled it, but there's screenshots of it. Thanks. I forgot that as an exhibit. Uh, briefly, we're going to break in 30 seconds. If you believe in this show, the enemy wants it shut down. Is doing dirty tricks that I won't even get into. You need to spread the word about the broadcast. Pray for us. Buy the books, the videos, the pro pure water filters. Uh, with the promo code WATER, you get 10% off. Infowarsstore.com or 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. You call, they can answer all your questions and get the July magazine. It's got 10 free bumper stickers. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. More details have come out on the FBI's plan to kill the leaders of the Occupy movement. Political assassination. That's public. Nobody's getting in trouble. Greenwald, new NSA bombshell on the way. Snowden, Obama afraid of awake Americans. That's a Snowden article we publish at Infowars.com. Is Homeland Security set to arm TSA agents? Bush blasts Snowden, says approval only matters on election day. I have the video clip of... I've heard from multiple sources Bush is getting a little senile, probably from all the partying he did or whatever. I mean, he looks like he's in great physical shape, but the old, the old, uh, the old uh, onion, I think, is having some problems. The old, the old potato brain. Uh, Trayvon Martin supporters threaten riots, looting of Zimmerman acquitted. I'm going to be getting into that. Police shoot dog defending owner as cops arrest him for filming them uh, and has Washington's arrogance undone its empire. We're going to be getting into all of that and more. By the way, Michael Savage gave me his cell phone number. I haven't called it. I've emailed his producer. Uh, I want to get Michael Savage on about all the crazy things that are going on after the holiday. So to my producers, tell me to call Michael Savage. Spe speaking of that, uh, here is a clip of Michael Savage yesterday talking about our story uh, on Infowars.com, no doubt from DrudgeReport.com where he found it. Still up there on the right-hand side, the easiest place to find it. Is DrudgeReport.com. Here is old uh, Michael Savage, good old Michael Savage, uh, talking about what's really going on with all of this. Then we're going to come back and break down the rest of the story. Here's Michael Savage from his syndicated radio transmission. Russian soldiers will be put on U.S. soil by Obama to provide security at U.S. events. That's right. You heard me correctly. As part of a deal signed last week in Washington, D.C., between the Ruskies and FEMA, you know, FEMA is, don't you? The people with the camps ready for you. Russian Bravo. soldiers are going to be put on U.S. soil to provide security at mass events in the United States. Do you have any idea what this means? The use of foreign troops or other officials in a law enforcement capacity providing security inside the U.S. is illegal under posse comitatus, but it does not prevent this regime from violating the Constitution again. Many people fear that this government is getting ready for some major action against the people. They think that this gang that targeted their political enemies through the IRS and through the NSA is getting ready to use foreign troops on this on soil, on our soil, who will not hesitate to shoot to kill. That was signed just last week between FEMA and the, uh, Russia, the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry and FEMA where Russian soldiers were, will provide security at mass events in the United States. This is illegal. It's a violation of the Posse Comitatus Act. Whoever signed it on US, for the U.S. government should go to prison, just as the IRS manager should go to prison. 
just as other out of control government bureaucrats who belong who in my opinion belong in belonged in Eastern Europe working for the Stasi but this is what's emerged under this criminal administration I don't have any other words nor do I have the time to mince words Obama is a gangster he's run he's running the country like he's a gangster commander not like the president of all the people but we the people now have to live a life we have to get through our days we have to earn a living we have to deal with our medical problems our children's issues our parents issues making a living paying taxes going to work and yet there's news out there the news is awesome I don't like to hear the words it's a slow news day there's never a slow news day in this, in this country wow. under this under this regime you know good for Michael Savage admitting there's FEMA camps good for him to cover stuff like this that's why I like him because none of the others will even touch it and a lot of times he gives us credit too for our news that he covers on the show in fact the clip's longer there's a longer clip he did later but the point is, is that this is for me. This isn't about a radio show. This is about saving our future. This is a conscious, coordinated, creeping authoritarian acclamation that's going on. There, there's no choice which side you've got to choose to be on, and that includes our military and police. I'm going to explain what's behind this all straight ahead. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action.
The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> what the people chanted, at least what the news cameras showed, as half of Boston or more had armored vehicles come in, hundreds of them, and police and military from all over the country aiming guns at children, at women. In Los Angeles, the police drove around shooting up multiple vehicles with white women driving cars when the mad cop supposedly was driving a truck and wasn't even the same color. And it happened over and over again, at least three times. Just a crazed, mad dog psychology where you get out of your car and have your driver's license in your hand and it flashes so the quickest gun in the West shoots you down and the police always say, he felt threatened, it's a good kill. Might start putting on the side of the police cards how many innocent civilians, as you call us, you've killed. Instead of how many Japanese zeros you've shot down, Maybe how many baby strollers you've run over. Maybe maybe how many old ladies you've shot. Maybe how many people's dogs you've shot when you're in their backyard. And again, I know most police are not bad people. But the system is turning them into paramilitary. And the feds are funding unconstitutional, it's been thrown out of court, checkpoints on our highways. The Army, the Marines are involved. All of this just goes on, the military drills, until we're so conditioned to it, and it's also in the TV and the movies, to where we accept it. And then you read the Rand Corporation documents I'm about to go over. And they admit that this is a long-term strategic plan to prepare us for the conversion from a once free society with due process and freedom over to a paramilitary third world banana boat republic. And that's at the heart of why this is happening in our culture. Yesterday, Paul Watson at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com published an article with press releases by FEMA that Drudge Report, the number one aggregating news site in the world, linked to. And so it went all over the web. It was talked about on different talk shows all over the country yesterday. Should we have Russians in America to keep us safe? And it's all part of the bizarreness. The globalists talk about how if they can acclimate us with learned helplessness and kind of uh, the psychological warfare tenets of mass Stockholm syndrome, we will basically put up with anything. And they need to slowly, incrementally titrate the dose of globalist poison to where we'll accept pretty much anything. It is normalcy bias is really the best way to, to describe it incrementally. Where globally, you notice the police, the military, all basically dress the same now. NATO troops dress like US troops. Russian troops dress like NATO troops. And they all do exchange programs with each other, even though on the surface they claim they're enemies with one another. Now, if you go back to the newspapers in the 1960s, you will see the State Department plan 7277 that we're about to show you on screen of your TV viewer. For radio listeners, just search the term State Department Memorandum 7277 or link to our article, uh, Russian Forces Provide Security at U.S. Events, and you'll be able to link through and uh, actually read the PDF of it. And the accompanying New York Times graphic from the 1960s that showed U.S. helmets getting smaller, less U.S. troops, 
Russian helmets getting smaller, less Russian troops, while the peacekeeping machinery of general and complete disarmament of every nation state except the UN and its army NATO. Now fast forward to today and look at how last year and this year in three separate hearings that we've covered, the Joint Chiefs of Staff sit there and tell the Congress, you don't control the power of the purse under the Constitution anymore. We get our orders from NATO and the president got military authorization for Libya and now Syria from NATO. Now, NATO was created by the Bilderberg Group. NATO was created by the CIA, which again is a robber baron controlled group. So let me in layman's terms explain what's happening here. You have the wealth of Europe, the wealth of the West, parlayed by robber barons in around 1900 in a Rockefeller Rothschild meeting, meetings they had in London and New York. These are all on record. Let's look them up. For the Cecil Rhodes Group as the front man for the Rothschilds, this is all on record. Look this up. They wrote books about it. I had guests in last week naming the books. To establish a corporate global government on the lines of the British East India Company that had run more than 15 nations at one time. The British found that the British government, if they put up their flag, they couldn't run India. But if they just called it a corporation, they could. For hundreds of years, a private Dutch-British German company, the British Dutch East India Company, they merged at one point, ran most of the ships, ran its own military, commanded British military, and would go in and take over all of India. They only got problems when they got so arrogant as to run the Jolly Roger, I mean the Union Jack. That's a joke. They call that the real pirate flag worldwide. That is free people running from it. They would run that sucker up and people would resist it. So Rhodes and others, this is why they set up the Council on Foreign Relations in 22 at Proud House, New York. Read, read that. That's on record. Said we're going to have a corporate global government on the, on the lines of the British Empire. But we're going to get rid of the wealth of England. As people look at the wealth of the average Britisher, back then you joined the empire, you actually got something out of it. It really did benefit England to a great extent. Sure, they paid in by millions of dead soldiers in the war, millions over the hundred years or so of its peak. They paid in, in taxes, but they could also get a piece of the booty, a piece of the loot. I know the popular meaning of booty means a woman's rear end or derriere, but it, it, it means pirate loot, booty. Uh, continuing, ladies and gentlemen, the problem is this is such a giant area of history. It was the British East India Company that took down China with a fake drug war. They lobbied China to make opium illegal. Then they brought in the illegal opium and bought off the police over again about 100 years and finally broke the country up in 10 and then 12 parts. So you have to understand there's a global corporate government. It isn't about to be set up. It's existed what is the British East India Company is about 400 years old. Look up the founding of the British East India Company for me. It's about 400 years old. The Dutch East India Company is about 400 as well. The point is this model, and they even write books about it. This is not my opinion. The globalists do. This is their global government. The British East India Company didn't pay taxes. The British East India Company was above the law. The British East India Company could take private ships, basically, of anybody they wanted, even when there wasn't a war going on. The British East India Company commanded British warships. The British East India Company was the guys that invented modern false flagging. On and on and on, staged terror attacks against their own interest. And so the model of the British East India Company, my memory served, it was formed in 1612. So that'd make it 400 years old exactly. All right, continuing here. I don't do that on purpose on air. I do that to test my own memory. This is the model. The New World Order ain't coming, Jack. The New World Order's here. It went and grabbed the resources of the world. It beat the Spanish. It beat the Portuguese. It ran out the Germans. It ran out the French. It won, okay? The British Empire. It ran everybody out. The Portuguese and Spanish had a lot more than they did just 200 years ago. Okay, nobody could beat this model. This is the model. Using freebooters, using letter of mark, you name it. And so 
when you read about Russian troops training to take on, quote, U.S. extremists in Colorado drills last year, when you read about Russian troops to be at sporting events, and it's going to be on the news, Russian troops, just to acclimate you. If you'll put up with the old enemy, the Ruskies here, you'll put up with your own cops doing it. You'll put up with your own military. It doesn't matter if they're Ruski. It doesn't matter if they're Japanese. It doesn't matter if they're Dutch. It doesn't matter if they're Israeli. It doesn't matter if they're German, French, any of it. They've all been here. I've been to the drills. I've videotaped it. It's all treason against humanity. Your police have been militarized. Your police on record by the Rand Corporation the last 60 years have been transformed into paramilitary soldiers. They now admit in the news that police are now running anti-insurgent operations in the U.S. That's what it is. You've been labeled the enemy. So your wife gets out with a driver's license, looks like a gun, they kill her. They're training you to go, good job, officer. You felt threatened where they can just kill us whenever they want. Pull Alex Jones over, boom, shoot me in the head, say I had a pen in my hand. They're now executing people publicly. They're acclimating the cops, the military, the people, everybody. We're going to go to break, and I'm going to come back and break all this down no matter how long it takes because and go over these exhibits here. But I remember when I first got on air 18 years ago getting calls going, I was in a Missouri National Park or State Park or in a Michigan or in Maryland. It was always the same story, and Russian troops came over and searched our bags. And I thought, these people are insane until I was sent photos. And then I went, I would get calls. I said, oh, next time you see this, you call me. So I'd get on an airplane, I'd go there. And the government was already listening. They'd break in our hotel rooms, they'd sabotage our rent car. And I would get there and there would be Russian troops and Israelis and, and everything. I've got footage of it. And then they would set fires and try to blame me. I mean, folks, this is a giant covert op. I'm going to tell you about it when we come back. By the way, every week now we're getting contacted by really iconic people. And one of the most iconic people uh, I could think of living. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've gotten in touch with, they've gotten in touch with us because of the system doing something anti-liberty to them. Talk about a living legend. Um, I <laughs> just, you know, the good news is everybody that knows what's going on needs to speak out now. Just like I said last week, and I guess that's starting to happen. So we better continue to check all our Facebooks and emails and everything because the kind of messages that are coming in here, guys. Uh, we need all these iconic people who've got the right stuff to go public and speak out against the New World Order. And it needs to be done right now. Because I'm telling you, folks... All the John Birch Society gets is demonized from the 50s and 60s, saying there's a plan to bring in foreign troops in America, incrementally getting us used to globalism. They knew because they had a lot of military officers who weren't traitors of this country, who were involved in classified briefings about this plan. And then in the 60s, they tried to float the plan when they thought America totally trusted the government to put UN troops in America. That's why you always hear the good old boys going, I see blue helmets, I start shooting. Because it's a real plan. And we've held it back. As the big new Brzezinski admits, they're at least a decade behind. But now they're trying to catch up. Every video game, every sitcom, every movie that's got cops in it, the militias are child molesters or are blowing things up, and George Washington's a pig. I mean, come on, man. That's the bad guys. You'd expect if the Russians would have took over in the 70s, that's what they'd have on TV. 
you know, once they took over. America is bad. Founding fathers are bad. Your guns are bad. The family is bad. The, the conservatives are bad. I mean, on and on and on and on. Al Qaeda is not the threat. It is the American people. It, it's game over. So going over these articles, Russian forces to provide security at U.S. events. <clears throat> Under NLE09 via FEMA, and I'll show you that coming up in the next segment. Did you guys print NLE09? FEMA NLE09? I wanted to, I'll, I'll do it during, I'll have a three minute break. I can get it during the next break. The point is, Russian forces to provide security at U.S. events. And then it goes on to say they're going to have their security here advising the TSA and advising others. And now they're announcing they're going to start arming the TSA. They've already armed some. That article's up on Infowars.com. All this is is global megabanks that are above the United States and above Russia and above China. And they make these deals where they control the unlimited trillions of dollars because they got all the governments to accept private Federal Reserves, EU Central Banks, UK Central Bank, Russian Central Bank. There's less than maybe 15 or so countries, most of them backwaters, that don't have a globalist-run central bank where, where $1 that you deposit can be loaned out as 10. Well, that gives those mega banks the power to take over the world. They have that power. Now they get trillions at 0% interest. And then loan it out to us at 10, 20, 30 percent or 40. Or in some cases, they just get trillions, hundreds of billions per company and straight bailouts. They get the corporate welfare. They get the NSA spy grid to spy on people. And so it's not just Russians here. It's Americans over there. And it's Latin American troops practicing landing in Florida. And it's U.S. troops practicing landing in the Latin American countries. And in NLE09, 15 tr uh, troop groups and security forces from 15 listed nations on FEMA's website here to, quote, train to take on domestic extremists. So that's what it is. The global has set up a world government. They start all these global forms of taxes. That's what these direct bailouts of the banks are and bail-ins. They go and grab money out of your private bank account, send it to private individuals. Who's getting it's even secret? And then there's just NATO forces just land or are invited in by your country as what they call a stabilization force. We're going to go to break in a long segment. I'm going to show you all these documents if you're a TV viewer. Radio listeners can just write down what I'm saying and look it up for themselves. And, and again, the globalists control the media, the dominant media, so they implode the countries, pose as the saviors, and then are invited in. EU stabilization force brought into Greece. EU stabilization force brought into Spain. EU stabilization forces, UN stabilization forces brought into Latin America to help carry out the environmental law, exterminating people. Africa. It's global peacekeepers who are the only ones that are going to be able to have the guns. In the future, our military will have no weapons. They'll still be U.S. units, but they'll be, and this is already happening, commanded under the U.N. NATO. It's self-created by the Rockefellers and Rothschilds on record. Look who created it, 1945 at a U.S. naval base in San Francisco, Presidio. yourselves what are you doing in this time of great challenge what are you doing to unlock minds